stores in Florida, so there are extras out. Yes, a new day is starting, and most of us greet it with hope, like these Hollywood extra girls on their way to work. United Art Studio, please. Hold it. Or these stenographers, sales girls, waitresses, yesterday's beauty contest winners from all over the world. Well, he didn't get her phone number. Of course, for some people, yesterday still hasn't ended. These fellows have been rehearsing all night. So I gone. The farmer said to the bud, your skin looks slightly pallid, so I'll dig you later, bud. But some solid, ain't no solid, solid potato, solid, that solid, solid jack. Solid potato, solid boy. Take a plate, fill it up, take a plate, fill it up, bring it right back. and ready to go. You know, I'm going to that radio show, Breakfast in Hollywood. Isn't that the one where the guy tries on a lady's hat? Yes, that's right. Uh, do you notice anything silly about me? Anything? You mean something out of the ordinary? Oh, my hat. I thought it was a hair dryer. Oh, Mr. St. John, you just made me the happiest woman in the world. You couldn't have said anything to please me more. <laughs> Fallen asleep. Did you locate him? San Pedro just phoned. They said they had no record of Seaman First Class James Glennie ever having been there. In his last letter, that's where he said he was going. How long ago was that? About three months ago. A lot can happen in that time. When he stopped writing, I thought. Yes? Nothing. Do you think he might be in San Diego? No, my dear. Let's be practical. You come back here at 5 o'clock tonight, and I'll have a return ticket to Minneapolis for you. Hmm? I'll tell you what I'll do. You go to the lounge and freshen up, and I'll give you a ticket to Tom Brenneman's breakfast in Hollywood. You've still got time, and that'll cheer you up a bit. How will that be? You've been awfully kind. Forget it. Thank you. Croopy this morning. Well, now maybe you'll pull in that pride of yours and let me get a little box of sand in the house at night. Come here. Nobody need know about it but you and me. Well, have it your own way. Now, darling, stay in the sun this morning and don't take your sweater off. Bye. 
right, Chippy. Richard? Huh? Are you awake? No. I'm leaving. Huh? Hey, woman who gets up at daybreak to see a radio show is nuts. Now, Richard. But go ahead. If you get a kick out of being goofy, don't let me spoil your fun. Oh, would you rather I go with you to San Diego today, dear? I wouldn't think of subjecting you to it. I'm going strictly on business, and there'll be no time for pleasantries. Now, run along to your concert. Radio show. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? <coughs> well, have a lovely trip, dear, and don't work too hard. It's better to be by yourself than you can always turn out. Hello. It's Mr. Wheelwright. No, 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 Cartwright. I, uh, I'm calling you up at this unearthly hour because we can get an earlier start for Delmar if you like. Oh, wonderful. Who's coming? The laundry man. It's the gentleman that's taking me swimming into the races today. Will you be quiet? I'll hop down, get a quick shave and a haircut, and pick you up at 9 o'clock, okie dokie. Oh, sure. Uh, honey, on your way over, would you stop and buy me a little swimsuit? Just any little thing. You pick it out and surprise me, huh? And ask him, can he cash a check? Goodbye, Miss McIntosh. Good morning, miss. Good morning, miss. I wonder will you spare a kiss? Going into Hollywood, sir? Yes, come on, get in. All right, thank you. Where's your home? Minneapolis, sir. Is that the right time? Yes. Why? I'm trying to catch an early radio show. Breakfast in Hollywood. Ever hear of it? I'm afraid I have. <laughs> My aunt back in Minneapolis listens every morning. A very intelligent woman. With very good taste, too. Oh, it's, it's good then, huh? Oh, terrific. Sometimes it keeps me awake all night. You say, do you know the fellow who runs it, uh, Tom Brenneman? Well, my mother knows him very well. In fact, she folded his first pair of pants. <laughs> well, do you think maybe you could get me a ticket? Oh, I'm sure I could. In fact, by strange coincidence, I have one in my pocket right here. There you are. Oh, thank you, sir, but, gee, I don't want to rob you of a good time. Oh, not at all. I have no trouble getting in. It's getting out that bothers me. Getting out is sure sweet words to me. Just got my discharge. Oh, swell. Why aren't you headed for home? Oh, I am, but some important business holds me here. A suit of civilian clothes that won't be ready until this afternoon. Hmm. I'll bet it isn't a blue serge suit. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again. Betty, hello. How are you? <laughs> Folks, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Tom Brenneman. Now you can all applaud. Spoil me. <laughs> 
How do you like getting up in the middle of the night? <laughs> what time did you get up? Four o'clock. Sucker. <laughs> I'd like to know, first of all, how many of you ladies here have never heard Breakfast in Hollywood? I mean, you never listened to it on the air. Is there anybody? Just you? Will you please get out? <laughs> Seriously, folks, each morning, just before we hit the air, we kind of like to visit a bit with you guests and kind of find out where you're from. You know, kind of break the ice, one of those sort of things. And hello there, who are you? <laughs> Mrs. Marie Edgedahl of Cherry Valley, California. Cherry Valley? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, Mrs. Edgedahl, where is Cherry Valley from here? Up near Beaumont. You mean down near Beaumont? Up! <laughs> oh. Well, isn't Beaumont down by Banning? Yes, but we're up on the mountain. That's up! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this right now. When, um... When you go south, do you go up south or down south? We go up south, but we're a little northeast. <laughs> You're over that away, in other words. <laughs> no, northeast, and it's up. <laughs> and we're just 29 miles from Palm Springs. Oh, is that so? Uh -huh. mm. Up or down, or south? <laughs> oh, we're just to the right of us. <laughs> 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 Listen, Mrs. Edgedahl, did you ever hear of the down in Sleepy Valley? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, look, do you know of any valley which you have to go up to get to? Mm -hmm. uh, what? Cherry Valley. I give up. <laughs> Well, let's go over here and visit a little bit now. Hello there, who are you? Dorothy Larson. Dorothy Larson. Well, come on, Dorothy, stand up here and let the lady see you. Oh. Gee, you're pretty. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> Minneapolis. Well, the name like Larson, you couldn't be from any other place but Minnesota. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> Tell me, Dorothy, do you hear the program back there occasionally? Oh. Do I have to tell? My goodness, we're not that bad, are we? <laughs> oh, no, but... Well, my boss may be listening in. Don't worry about it. We're not on the air just yet. Oh, I But think. you do hear us occasionally, huh? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Back in Minneapolis at this time each morning, I used to have coffee and donuts in Metty's Drugstore, and... Well, I listened then. Uh -huh. And you weren't supposed to be listening. Uh, I wasn't supposed to be having coffee and donuts. No. <laughs> oh, oh, well, don't think the last on me. Oh, why not? Well, I quit my job two weeks ago. Oh, you did, eh? <laughs> well, I'm quitting you, too, right now. <laughs> He's all right. Everything's all right. Who's the driver of this car? I am, officer. But it really wasn't my fault. I was still in second gear. I just turned the corner. Take it easy, bud, but stick her off. Don't try to get up, lady. That's right, Mother. You just stay here and rest a little. Oh, what do you mean, rest? I just got out of bed an hour ago. You might be hurt. Oh, away with such foolishness. I'm all right. Are you sure? Why, certainly. I'm not a bit hurt. Let me get back to the side more. Oh, wait a minute. I've got an ambulance coming. Oh, don't tell me that. I haven't time for such foolishness. I've got to go someplace. I think perhaps, officer, the lady says... Will you keep out of this? Where do you want to go, lady? Oh, well, just down to breakfast at Hollywood. It's only a little ways down the street. And I tell you, I'm all right. But I don't know that, you see. Oh, well, I'll miss it. I've been looking forward to it for weeks. And I'm late now. Really, officer? I think if she feels... Will you be it... quiet? Listen, I'll go into Mr. Brenneman's and sit down. And then if you want to, you can come and look in on me if you've a mind. Oh, all right, Mother, you go ahead. Right. I'll come down to see you just as soon as I get through to you. Thank you. Sorry to been so much. Oh, excuse me, but uh, when you say as soon as you're through here, does that mean... It that... certainly does. It means you and I are going to have a nice long chat. Let me see your driver's license. Oh, but, officer, this is going to throw me off schedule. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. 
good morning to you out there along our network. Good morning from the ladies having breakfast in Hollywood. And say, we have a swell turn out here this morning. Along about this time of our program, we'd like to visit a bit. I think we'll start with maybe you. What is your name? Harriet Dean. Where are you from, Miss Dean? I'm from Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida. Hmm. Hot down there, isn't it? <laughs> Now, let's see. Um, who are you, please? Your name? Mullins, this morning. Oh, this morning? This afternoon, it will be Henderson. Oh, being divorced? I'm being married. <laughs> well, and congratulations. I suppose you're the happy groom-to-be? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm mean, sir. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Henderson, are you being married in Hollywood? We are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what is your business, Mr. Uh, Henderson? I'm Miss Mullins' secretary. Hmm. What some folks won't do to keep a secretary these days. Oh, thank you. See one. All right, folks, now we're going to meet our service boys and girls, and I'll ask you to hold your applause, as I do each day, until we've met them all. We just want to be sure that the home folks have a chance to hear them. You. Peter Michael, Waterboro, Maine. Second class. Oh, excuse me, is this seat taken? No, no, I came alone, too. <laughs> Well, that's nice. So did I. I didn't want to embarrass anyone. Why don't you put a clove in your mouth, and then nobody will know you've been drinking? No, no, I mean my hat. Do you think it's silly enough for Mr. Bremen to pull on? Brenneman. It is kind of crazy in an artistic sort of way. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I, you know, for seven months I've been trying to wear a hat that Mr. Brennan would put on. Well, I'll bet this is it. Oh, do you think so? Well, I hope so. Lieutenant? Uh, Lieutenant Stephen Wayne, Baltimore, Maryland, sir. Mm -hmm. You've there too, haven't you? Yes, sir, a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. What are some of those things, Lieutenant? Well, that's the Navy Cross and the Purple Heart and this one. Oh, we only have 30 minutes. We can't go into all that. Uh, well, look who's here. Do you recognize me? Who are you, anyway? Electricians made third class, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Well, that'll help a lot. What's your name? No coaching, please. Oh, <laughs> Ken Smith. Well, wait a minute, Ken. Don't get mad about it now. You hear me? <laughs> what were you doing out in San Fernando Valley? Trying to find some people from Minneapolis. What for? Just to talk to, I guess. Oh, Ken, you don't have to go out to San Fernando Valley to find people from Minneapolis to talk to. <laughs> Come on here, son. I'll old Cupid Brown. I'll teach you. <laughs> Come on, Ken. Who you are again? I'm Dorothy Larson. Oh, Dorothy, I want you to meet Ken Smith. <laughs> you know, come on, Ken, pull up a chair. Oh, this is going to be swell. Now, you kids get together and talk your heads off with you. Boy, you need somebody to talk to. <laughs> mm, I'd say that's handsome. Just that I hate to leave here without... Without what? Without finding my fiancé. Oh. I came here to look for him. He's from Minneapolis, too. His name is James Glenning, and he's in the Navy. And Jimmy I... Glenning? Do you know him? Do I know him? Why? Uh. Yes, go on. What were you going to say? Nothing. I, I don't think he's the same fella that you know. Now, I guess we've met them all. I wish everybody in uniform in the restaurant would please stand, because we want to give you a welcome to breakfast in Hollywood. Come on, your feet. And let them out. That's good. Look, the more I think of it, I'm not even sure if he came from Minneapolis. But you said this guy was engaged to a girl by the name of... What did you say your name was? Dorothy. Oh, there you are. His girl's name was Cora. All right, come on, come on, come on, Minneapolis. Break it up. The convention is over here now. Okay. Can you get back to the table? All right. And before you go, for being such a good sport, here's a couple of $5 bills for you. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Brown. Right. And if you're in Hollywood tonight, spend it on her, will you? <laughs> I sure will. And spend it in here. <laughs> come on, give my hand there. Come on. Now then, we're going for a hat. <laughs> this silly routine every morning. I don't know what you're laughing about. <coughs> Who are you, please? Mary Calder. Mary Calder. Where are you from, Mary? Uh, Kansas. From Kansas? Where did you get that silly number? Just a little thing I cooked up myself. You cooked it up yourself. Looks like it boiled over. <laughs> Look at there. That is a monstrosity down there. Hmm. 
I simply have to get a closer look at that thing. <laughs> no, we're talking about you. Don't look over your oh. shoulder. Who are you? Elvira Spriggins. Mm -hmm. And where are you from, Miss Spriggins? Pomona. <laughs> Pomona. I should have known. <laughs> that is the silliest thing I've seen in this place in a long time. Where do you live now? In Hollywood. In Hollywood. That looks like a typical Hollywood model. Oh. What is it, Bobby? There? Oh, my goodness. This is Mr. even worse. Do you want me to take it off? No, not just right now. Uh, do you, do you uh, like it? Yes, I'll be back. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> hello, Tom. Ed, it's awfully nice of you to come over and say hello to us oh, this morning. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Pleasure. And do you know Mrs. Cooper, Gary's mother? No. Hello, you? Mrs. Cooper. Nice Gee, it's to nice you. to see you. How's Gary? Very well, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's grand. Well. Did you have a nice breakfast? Oh, the loveliest bacon. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and Mrs. LeSeur, Joan Crawford's mother. Oh, hello. How, How are you? you? How is Joan? Fine. Mm -hmm. Please give her my regards. I certainly will. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you uh, you hear our program, too, do you? Every morning. Mm -hmm. You enjoy it? Very much. Well, that's nice. Do you think I'm a good master of ceremonies? The best ever. Oh. And you think I'm handsome? Very handsome. Mm -hmm. And terribly underpaid, wouldn't you say? Yes, very much underpaid. Do you know you sound just like my mother. I am your mother. And she is too. <laughs> oh, what a lot of ham in that family. <laughs> Say, speaking of ham, Hedda, I'm inviting you all down for dinner tonight. Why, thank you, Tom. We'd love to. Oh, that'd be swell. Hedda, I know that you're famous for daffy hats, but what is that supposed to represent? Well, when I left home this morning, it was a goldfish bowl. Hedda, I simply have to try it on. Do you mind? What do you suppose I wore it for? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Cooper, would you please hold the microphone? Just like that. Thank you. There oh, you are. This is the silliest thing I have ever seen, even for you, Etta. <laughs> there you are, kids. <laughs> Don't you feel bad, dearie. I think yours is much worse than hers. Wait a minute, you smarties. After all, on me, it didn't attract a duck. Uh, no, but brother, what an invitation to a woodpecker. <laughs> Hi, Hedda. Spike Jones and his city slickers. Need I say any more? <laughs> well, what'd you expect, Tchaikovsky? A sprig of parsley and a rubber bathtub stopper. A hat for a head of hopper. Mix a batch of concrete in a five and dime corn popper. A hat for a head of hopper. Take a ripe banana and a jigger of Cointreau. Broil it over charcoal, that's Miss Hopper's new chapeau. Add a pickle to the side of Grandpa's old silk topper. A hat for a head of hopper. When the swallows come back at the You can bet your life they'll land right on Miss Hopper's new hat band. Listen to the mockingbird, listen to the mockingbird. Please have pity on that kid, he's slated for Miss Hopper's lid. Listen to the mockingbird, listen to the mockingbird. Our feathered friend's a real dead pigeon now. First you take a... Then you add a... Why, a hat for a head of Hopper. Then you mix it with a... Why, a hat for a head of Hopper. Scientists are busy with a plan. They're working on it. Mixing up synthetics for Miss Hopper's Easter bonnet. So if you see a Frankenstein, don't paint or call a copper. Because what you see is a hat for a head of Hopper. And then the cop discovered that my driver's license had expired. Of course, it's only a formality, my dear, but uh, I shall have to take, well, a slight examination, and I shall be delayed, well, five or ten minutes. All right, Mr. Cartwright, but please hurry. You're late already. Goodbye. I wish we could hit on some way to do it. Do what? Let him know Tuesday's my birthday. Well, it is. Now we're going to award our wishing ring. 
Yes, sir. Let me see here. Who are you? A uh, Wanda Ricketts. From where, Miss Ricketts? A uh, Denver, Colorado. From Denver. Please draw a number out of the basket. Right. All right. This is the winner. Four nine three six six. Four nine three six six wins the ring. I have it. Here it is. Oh, good. Well, look, it's Minneapolis. Well, come on here, honey. You've won our wishing ring. Come on over here and let the lady see. Gee, this is swell. Dorothy Larson, the donut and coffee girl. That's right. <laughs> oh, this is grand. Tell me, Dorothy, it must have been swell to come in here and have a first-class breakfast. Well, I was a little late getting a seat, and when they served me, all I got was... Coffee and donuts, yeah. <laughs> Dorothy, you say you're a secretary, huh? I was. I'll be a housewife soon, I hope. Oh, gee, that's swell. So instead of taking dictation, you'll be giving it, eh? <laughs> I hope to live on a farm. Why? So I can hatch baby chicks. <laughs> well, now, don't laugh. That's a good trick if she can do it. <laughs> Dorothy, you've won our wishing ring. Here, I want to show it to you. Same time, I want to show it to the lady. There oh. it is. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, now, I want to put it on your finger. You make a wish, and we'll ask everybody here and everybody along our network to wish along with you. Now, what's your wish? I wish that I may find a friend. Well, Dorothy, you've found 300 new friends here this morning. Isn't that right, folks? <laughs> you bet it is. Thank you, but, well, I mean a certain friend. He's my fiancé, and he's still in the service. Oh, well, gee, we hope you find him. And Dorothy, it's a special treat this morning. We have something here that'll make wishing all the sweeter. Stand up there, Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Russell. <laughs> Andy's going to sing a little song dedicated to the winner of our wishing ring. And you keep wishing, honey. All right. Good. Okay, Andy. If I had a I'd never ask for any worldly thing. My heart and I agree on what a wish should be. One miracle would do the miracle that you'd love me. just a moment, will you? I would have words with you. If you think you're going to get away with one number, you're crazy. 
What would you like to sing for an encore? Well, uh, how about Magic is the Moonlight, Tom? Oh, that'd be swell, especially in view of the fact you rehearsed it all morning. <laughs> Magic is the moonlight on this lover's night As I see the moonlight shining in your eyes Can't resist their power in this moonlit hour Love began to flower Magic is the moonlight, much more than any tonight. Magic is the moonlight, for it made you mine. Muñequita linda, de cabellos de oro, de dientes de perlas y labios de rubí. Si me quieres como yo te adoro, si de mí te acuerdas como yo de ti. Y a veces escucho un eco divino y envuelto en la brisa para Te quiero mucho, 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 tanto como entonces, siempre hasta morir. Yo te quiero mucho, 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 mucho. Just a pleasure. Now, as we do each morning, we'd like to award our orchid to our eldest guest, and I want a bid. How old? Seventy-one. Seventy-one. Oh, you're just a youngster. Seven. Seventy-nine, over here. Eighty-two. Eighty-two, over there. Eighty-two. Is that the winner? Eighty-two. And so it is. The little lady over here. Well, isn't this nice? Hello there. How are you? Eighty-three. 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 A female baritone. <laughs> Did you say that, sir? I'm eighty-three years old. Well, this is a ladies' program, sir. <laughs> you would look pretty silly walking down Hollywood Boulevard with an orchid in your lapel. <laughs> Yes, I made a mistake. My daughter-in-law says I'm only 78. Hmm. <laughs> How'd you make a mistake like that? I've been married twice. Oh. <laughs> well, here's a little consolation prize for you. Have a cigar. Now then, we'll go over here and see the little lady who is 82. Hello there. Hello. Well, and who are you? I'm Anna Reed from Hollywood, California, and I'm pleased to meet you. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, too. Tell me now, uh, you say you're 82. I am. I'm 82 going on 83. Well, come on out here and meet the ladies. Gee, this is wonderful. Here she is. She's Anna Reed. She's from Hollywood, and she is 82. Now then, tell me, is it Miss or Mrs. Reed? Mrs., of course. Oh, I love that, of course. Why'd you say that? Well, because I was married. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, do you have any children? Yes, one son. Mm -hmm. Grandchildren? One. Great-grandchildren? One. Annie, you're in a rut. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, you don't mind my calling you Annie, do you, honey? Oh, no, I like it, Tommy. <laughs> 
You're a very active woman for 82. Oh, sometimes I feel that I'm not very active, but I've got my own teeth. <laughs> I have mine, too, on the lower side. <laughs> Do you and Mr. Reed live in Hollywood? Oh, no. Mr. Reed passed on about 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. I live alone with my little dog, Tippy. Well, gee, you smell nice. No, no, I didn't mean it to sound quite like that. I mean that perfume you have on is lovely. What is it? It's Mouguette. <laughs> Lily of the Valley in French. Oh. <laughs> my favorite. Is that your favorite? Mm -hmm. No, but where were you born? Well, originally in Claremont, New Hampshire. You were born originally? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. And where did you meet Mr. Reed? In Newport, New Hampshire. And where did you go to live after you were married? In Claremont, Newport. Then you lived in both places. Uh -huh. How was that? Well, I'd live a month or two in Claremont, and then uh, I'd live two or three months in Newport. Mm -hmm. Why, though? Well, my husband used to be on the fire department, so he had to live in Newport at odd times for the calls. No, oh, I understand. Claremont was my home, and Newport was where my husband lived. Well, that's a little inconvenient, isn't it? <laughs> huh? It was inconvenient when a call had come through at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes, I imagine so. <laughs> oh, oh, Annie. <laughs> now, from, from Newport to convenient, I mean from... Yes, I guess it would be. Right. <laughs> then your husband was in Newport most of the time. Now, only for fire. Oh, only for fire. And at other odd times why he was in Claremont. Hmm. But where did he sleep? At the firehouse. Oh. <laughs> uh, where was your son born? In Newport or Claremont? White Pigeon, Minnesota. <laughs> you, you know, Annie, you could have saved us both a lot of trouble. What do you mean if I'd stayed back in Claremont? No. No, if you'd have burned the firehouse down in Newport. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> well, now, honey, look what we have for you. <laughs> there it is, the orphan. Oh, it's awful pretty. Yes, and it's for you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You've heard the program, have you? Oh, yes, I listen to it every morning. Well... Is that your first orchid? It most certainly is. And I want what goes with it. <laughs> Say, listen, dear. When I was taking my driver's test, I ran over traffic but then I had a blowout. How about your meeting me at my office at 12.30? Hi. That's only four hours away. Hey, where are you having this tire fix? New Guinea? Oh, all right. But you'll be there at 12.30, you hear? Now we're about to award our famous beauty kit. So we'll ask one of our guests to draw a number here. Who are you, please? Florence Promise. From where, Miss Promise? I'm from Philadelphia. From Philadelphia. What are you chewing? Gum. Oh, you have to spit it out. You can't chew gum in the ready. That's it. <laughs> Will you draw a number out of the basket, please? Hope it's mine. Uh, I hope so, too. Well, here it is. <laughs> four, nine, four, oh, seven. Four, nine, four, oh, seven. Here, here it is. Over here it is. <laughs> nice. You lucky person. Come on out here now. Isn't it nice? Now tell us, who are you? I can't, can't remember my name. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, Mrs. Richard. I mean, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Richard Cartwright. Well, now, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Where do you live, Mrs. Mrs. Cartwright? I live in Ohio, mm -hmm. Columbus, Ohio. I mean, I live in Hollywood. I can't seem to remember anything. No. Just a little nervous. Now, don't be afraid of this microphone. No. You've won our beauty kit. I know. Beverly, won't you show it to Mrs. Cartwright? Same time, show it to the ladies here. Isn't that a dandy? Oh, it's very nice. Uh -huh. Well, you don't seem very excited about it, Mrs. Cartwright. Oh, but I am. 
It's just that I don't go in very much for cosmetics. Oh, well, you will now. <laughs> There's enough goop in there to keep you beautiful for a year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid my husband wouldn't care for that. You see, he likes the plain, natural, home-type girl. Well, in this day and age, he's a novelty. Didn't <laughs> he? <laughs> I figured it'd do that. Do what? Split the wheel bearing, that's all. Boy, was that, uh, is that serious? Well, we ain't got none in stock. We'll have to send out for one. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Mr. Bynerman. Thank you for asking. Goodbye. All right, ladies, let's move on, please. Let's make a little room here. What in the world happened here, Bobby? A lady fainted. A lady fainted. Right, let's move on, please. Here, Why, Annie, you rascal, I'm surprised at you. I'll be all right in a minute. There's my pocketbook. Oh, don't worry, honey. It's right here. Oh, thank you. Here you are. She was hit by a car about an hour ago, Tom. Oh. She claimed she wasn't hurt, so I let her come on in here. Do you have any pain? Not much. I called an ambulance, too. Oh, no ambulance. Don't let them take me to the hospital, please. Well, they just want to see if there's anything wrong with you. I'm, I'm all right. Thank you. Honest, I am. All I need is a good cup of tea in my own house. Well, if there's nothing wrong with you, they'll take you right home. Oh, no, they're liable to keep me there. And then what's become of Tippy, my little dog? He's old and alone. He's got to have someone take care of him. I'd be glad to take care of him today. I have nothing else to do. Oh, there you are. That's awful nice of you. You'd take him for a little walk, maybe? <laughs> Why, sure. Now, you have nothing to worry about. Well, you're sure that they'll bring me home if they find there isn't too much wrong with me? Well, I guarantee it. And by golly, just to make sure, I'll go with you. How's that? <laughs> oh, you've been so nice to me. I... I just hate to put you out. Besides, you're going to be awful mad at me. Look what I did to my pretty flower. All right, folks, break it up. Move on, please. May I speak to you for a minute? Well, sure. You were teasing me this morning, weren't you? About what? About not knowing Jimmy Gladney. Oh. Of course you know him, because he sent me this picture several months ago. Thought you looked familiar. Then I remembered this. Yeah, sure, I know Jim. Maybe you can tell me where to find him. I wish I could, but I don't know where he is. Honest, I don't. I'm sorry. Would you mind if I asked you a favor? Not a bit. Oh, Jimmy means an awful lot to me, and I was wondering if... I'd be ever so grateful if you'd just talk to me a few minutes about him. It'd be a pleasure. Tell me how he looked, and some of the things he said, and some of the things he did. Say, listen, I have to take Mrs. Reed's little dog for a walk. Would you like to go along? You wouldn't mind? Mind? Well, it might be a slight inconvenience, but... Uh... I think I can manage to stand up under the strain. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. I, uh, I was just going to write you a letter this afternoon. Are you kidding? You told me to meet you here. Uh, this is Myrtle, my roommate. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Why, Gloria. Why didn't you tell me he was so good looking? <laughs> uh, Miss Hammer, suppose you run along to lunch, then? Eh? I'd be glad to. Honey, yeah? listen, I. Uh, honey, Myrtle's broke, and so we thought it would be nice if you won some money for her at the races today, too, huh? Oh, really? Well, I mean, say, after all. Uh, uh, Mr. Cartwright. Did anyone ever tell you that you look like Gable? Oh, really? You think so? I, I haven't got his shoulders at all. Look, are we going to the races today or not? It's 20 minutes to one. You bet we are. On our way, we'll stop at the barbershop and then we're off. Nothing can stop us now. All right. Yeah? I have to come to the police station. That old lady you hit this morning is hurt worse than we thought. There's a bench warrant for you. 
Did you ever go to the Crystal Ballroom in Minneapolis? Oh, sure, every Saturday night. Oh, we went on Friday. I guess maybe that's why I never saw you there. Yeah, that's just like me. I never get to meet a good-looking girl until it's too late. How about docks for Hamburg? Mm, yeah, but we were more on the chop suey side. That was a little expensive for Jimmy and me. It's one thing I never had to worry much about, dough. With me, it was always here today and gone tomorrow. Don't you ever worry about your future? No, I got a crabby old uncle who does that. It's not much sense than both of us worry. You're lucky. I didn't have anybody to worry about me. That is, until I met Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. He worries about me all the time. Look. Uh... Oh, in nice little ways, I mean. Like not letting me sit in drafts or telling the fellas to watch their language when I'm around. Doesn't that make you a pain in the neck to the other guys? Of course not. Well, they get a kick out of the way that... I never thought of it like that. Those are very pretty flowers. Yes. Aren't they beautiful? Mm. They remind me of the ones down on the island, because they're so different. each other a little bit better. Oh, all right. How's this? Swell. Go ahead. Huh? Put the quarter in. Oh, gee. <laughs> Let, let's, let's do it again. That pose is great. You smiling? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Okay. Fair. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't help it. Honest, I couldn't. Darling. I'm sorry you misunderstood my friend. I it. didn't, Don. It, it's just that you're so darn sweet. What? I say you're so darn sweet and I'm so darn lonesome. Well, that isn't very flattering to me either. No, no. What I mean is that, well, we're both sort of in the same boat. What we need is somebody to help us over a hurdle, see? No, I don't see. There's something that you ought to know. I'm going to tell you, but you're not going to like it. I don't want to hear anything more. As far as you're concerned, I'm terribly disappointed. Don't bother taking me back to the bus. But, Dorothy. Please, I don't want you to think I'm just making a play for you. I meant that kiss from the bottom of my heart. Do you realize what you're saying? I sure do. Then you're a fine friend of Jimmy. I'm a better friend of yours. That's why I want to tell you something. Just what are you driving at? Just this. You may be in love with Jimmy, but you're not engaged to him. Why do you say that? Because he's married to somebody else. Mary. I didn't want to tell you before because well, it was none of my business and I knew it would hurt you. I don't believe you. You're making it up. If it is true, why didn't Jimmy tell me? Why didn't he write me? He was waiting to get up enough nerve. He met a girl in Spokane. He hadn't seen you for over a year. Just went hook, line, and sinker for this other girl and married her the week I shipped out. Somebody had to tell you sometime. You thought for your own convenience you'd tell me now. I just didn't want you to go on eating your heart out for something. When you else. were on hand. That's the real reason you told me, wasn't it? I just told you. At first, I didn't think it was any of my business, but... Oh, when... no, don't try to explain. Don't try to explain anything. I'm smuddled up. I don't know what to do. Dorothy, don't run out on me. I, <coughs> I, I got the dog on my hands. You're a first-class um, 
Chet. Now, now, baby, if I... If you had posted bail and kept your mouth shut, we'd have been out of here an hour ago. Oh, girls, ease up a little bit, will you? After all, when I started talking to that pleasant gentleman in the gray suit and told him what I thought of the police, how did I know he was a chief of detectives? Oh, at the rate we're going to Del Mar, I'll never make any money. Now, now, let's not lose our temper. Well, for pity's sakes, let's get going. In less than nothing flat, sweetheart. First we go to the barbers, and then we'll really hit the open road. Now, here's the car. Get your beautiful selves in there. There you are. <laughs> Yeah, you in? Fine. Make that track if it's the last thing I do. for being so kind. Well, some other time, please, ma'am. Right now, there's something important I have to do before 5 o'clock. Very well. Goodbye. So long. Breakfast in Hollywood. Oh, I'm sorry. His line is busy. You're welcome. Oh, Miss Fields. Yes? This gentleman's waiting to see you. Excuse me. My name is Ken Smith. Is Mr. Brenneman in? Do you have an appointment, Mr. Smith? No, I don't, but... Oh, then I'm afraid he can't see you today. This is very important, miss. I'm awfully sorry. Mr. Brenneman is a very busy man. Could you come in tomorrow? <laughs> that won't do me any good. I'm in trouble, and tomorrow will be too late. Well, what sort of trouble? Girl trouble. Look, miss, you don't want to see two people who really need each other both end up with a kick in the heart, do you? Um, wait a minute. Yes? Excuse me, Mr. Brenneman. There's a young sailor out here. A uh, Mr. Kenneth Smith. Tell him to come in, please. All right. You may go in. First door to the right. Thank you. Hello, Ken. What's on your mind? Hello, Mr. Brenneman. Oh, boy, you sure got me into something. Now you got to help me out. I got you into something. What? You introduced me to Dorothy, that girl from Minneapolis. She won the wishing ring this morning, remember? What happened to her? Fiancé show up? No, sir, and he isn't going to. Yes? I have a call on number three for you. All right, hold it, and I'll take it in just a moment. The fellow she was engaged to married somebody else and didn't tell her. I suppose you rectified that error. Well, how did you know? I can tell by that sick look on your face. Oh, well, when I told her, she got me all wrong. She broke out crying and ran away. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? She's going back to Minneapolis tonight. Her bus leaves in 25 minutes. Will you go down and talk to her? Will you explain to her? Explain what? Can't you see what she means to me? If she gets on that bus tonight... Look, there's only 20 minutes left. Mr. Brenneman. Yes? That party's still waiting on the phone. They say it's urgent. Okay, I'll take it right now. This isn't just a crush. I'm goofy about her. This morning when I met you, I had nothing to gamble for. Now I've got everything. You're not going to let me blow it without getting a fair shake for it, are you? You're the gabbiest guy I've ever met. I'll tell you what you do. You go over to the bus depot. Hold her till I get there. Okay. And I'll be over just as soon as I answer this phone call. Oh, gee, Mr. Brenneman, you're the top. Oh, there you go. Gab, gab, gab. Now go on, beat it. I'll be over in a few minutes. And look, don't try to be persuasive. Be yourself. Okay. So long. That telephone call? You can take it here, sir. Right. Hello. Mr. Brenneman, this is Mrs. Reed's nurse. I'm a little worried. Mrs. Reed has had a peculiar spell, and I've called the doctor. I wonder if you could come over for a few minutes. Oh, you bet I will. I won't be gone long. All right. Won't you just look at me a minute? I can hear you without looking at you. On the Dorothy, I didn't tell you about Jimmy just because I... Oh, I've already told you it's unimportant anyway. Now, what more can I say? Well, you could tell me you're not angry with me. Can't you see I don't want to talk to you? Oh, excuse me. Say, do you know Tom Brenneman? What does he look like? Well, he's, uh, uh... Oh, skip it. Sorry. Huh? Phoenix, Langstaff, Albuquerque, and 
something to fight for. You see, Tippy's the only one that needs me, and he's lived his life, too. Oh, you're talking through your hat. We all have work to do. We have people who need us. No, that's a lot of nonsense. You're right, it is a lot of nonsense. I guess you and I both are fed up with this good neighbor stuff. That's right. My golly, Annie, I wish I could be more like you. Then maybe I'd have some sense, too. <laughs> well, you face fact. Your work is done. Why stick your nose into somebody else's business? Well, have a good night, honey. I think I will. I feel sleepy now. I'll go back to the office. Let somebody else help me. Good night. Help who? Oh, I was just thinking out loud. Good night. Wait a minute. Yeah? Who's in trouble? Oh, I don't want to bother you with it. You're tired. Now, you come back here and tell me. I want to know who's in trouble. Well, you remember the young sailor and the girl from Minneapolis with the program this morning? I most certainly do, and a mighty cute pair they were, too. Well, the boy got a crush on the girl, and they had a quarrel, and she's going back to Minneapolis tonight. Oh, what a pity. Yes, he's been over at the office mooning around. Wants me to help him. You'd think it was the end of the world. Well, to two young people in love, a quarrel is the end of the world. Well, let's forget about it. I've got to go back to the office. Now, if you want anything... Wait. I got an idea. Yeah. You go and get those two young people and bring them here, and I'll bet you I can get them together again. Well, I wouldn't think of it. You're a sick woman. Now, if you say that again, I'm going to get right up and go get them myself. Are you sure you want to be bothered? Just a moment ago, you oh, said... Oh, that was just a lot of talk. Now, please do me the favor and go get them and bring them here. All right, but you're forcing me. San Francisco, Sacramento, Salt Lake City, Cheyenne, Omaha, Minneapolis, or... Look, if I write you a letter and care a Doc's hamburger joint, will you answer me? No. Gosh, not, not even a postcard? No. All right, sailor, will you get in or out, please? Okay, okay. Sorry, buddy, no loafing on the platform.
Jesse and Larson. She's on the Salt Lake bus that left Hollywood at 5 o'clock. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. You're doing the mayor of Encino a big favor. Bye. Do you know of any other place where a sailor who's lost his girl might go? No. Unless maybe a cocktail bar. Why, well, sure he would. What's the matter with us? Let's start phoning them right now. There's only 900 of them in and around Hollywood. Well, try it anyway. Tell them it's for breakfast in Hollywood. And tell them we'll give a reward to anybody who brings Ken to the phone. How much? Well, two tickets to the radio show, of course. What do you expect, a half interest in the joint? I'd hardly know it to me. You've changed my whole appearance. You have a type of features, dear. It is just that you have been neglecting to bring them out to good advantage. Uh, I can hardly wait till my husband sees me. Why not surprise him? Telephone and have him meet you someplace for dinner. I can't get out of town. Oh, but my dear, with that beautiful hair, you surely you are going somewhere tonight. <laughs> I'm afraid not. I'd like to have my bill. Very well, we will get it. Thank you. Really, it is a pity. Such a lovely makeup and hairstyle just tries to be taken out. I'm sorry. I'm afraid it'll have to wait. You see, I'm a little old-fashioned. I don't believe in wives gallivanting around while their husbands are away. Working as hard as mine does. I understand perfectly, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. And come again. Oh, with you. indeed I will. Thank you, Miss Carter. Thank you. <laughs> outside in your car say that if you don't come out in two minutes, they're going to come in and wipe up the floor with you. Uh, you better forget the shampoo, Herman, and let me get out of here. No need carrying the punishment to the point of cruelty. What can I do for you, please? Oh, good evening. If you and your girlfriends think it's going to be one, you're optimistic. Gods, that was my wife. Officer. You got a passenger by the name of Larson, a young lady going to Minneapolis? Is there a Miss Larson on board? My name is Larson. Miss Dorothy Larson. That's right. Why? Is something the matter? Do you know Tom Brenneman? Oh, yes, sir. I was at his radio broadcast this morning. Okay, lady, I'm sorry, but you'll have to come back to Hollywood with us. What for? Stop outside and I'll tell you. About a ring. Mr. Brenman claims you stole one from him. Come on. Stop. 
so good. What's wrong? Mr. Brenneman missed the bus. The girl left and the boy has disappeared. Oh, no. Mr. Brenneman's had the girl arrested and she's being brought back to Hollywood by subterfuge. Did you say arrested? Yes. Oh, it's bad. That's what it is. Chippy. Brought your bone. Yeah. Save that for you. You like that point? Go ahead. Yeah. Think you're gonna like that? Huh? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Is that you, young man? Oh, excuse me, ma'am. I tried to come in quietly so I wouldn't disturb you. I just brought Tippy a bone. Oh, thanks. My, don't you look nice? I hardly recognized you in your new suit. Thank you, ma'am. Your young lady friend will be mighty proud of you. Oh, well, that's all off. She's gone back to Minneapolis. That's not the way I hear it. Oh, but I saw her leave on the bus myself. I was with her until she... Maybe so. But they're bringing her back to Hollywood under subterfuge. When you say they, do you mean the police? Mm -hmm. Two of them. Big cops. They took her off the... They yanked her off the bus under very extenuating circumstances. But why? What's she done? Something to Mr. Brenneman. What? I don't know. There'd be an awful secret about it. Oh, they are, are they? Well, that means they're trying to pin something on her. The very thing I said to myself when I heard it. Oh, you can bet your life if I had my strength, I'd be right down there with bells on. But where are they taking her? I don't know exactly, but I'd go to Mr. Brenneman and find out. I will. And don't you worry, Mrs. Reed. I'll find her. Oh, excuse me, but, uh... Have you by any chance seen a lady in here by the name of Cartwright? What do you think this is, the Bureau of Missing Persons? Well, I don't know. I... What does she look like? She's the most beautiful woman in the world. Why don't you try Tom Brenneman's? They all wind up there sooner or later. You think so? Yes. I never thought you cared. It's better to be by yourself. 
yourself It is better To be by yourself Love is made by two Don't include a third Once you lose your chicken And you get the bird So it's better To be by yourself Never trust a gal Who puts on sweet dialogue Never trust a pal Cause remember that man's best friend is his dog So it's better To be by yourself It is better To be on the shelf Be just like a hermit living in a cave You don't get much loving, but the dough you save makes it better to be by yourself. She wants to do is fight So it's better to be by yourself Boy, it's better to be by yourself Oh man, it's better to be by yourself Boy I want to use the item tomorrow's column, King Will you check on it and let me know right away? Okay. Oh, excuse me, but uh, could you by any chance direct me to someone who could perhaps help me? Oh, what about? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm, uh, I'm looking for my wife. It's quite a long story. Well, this sounds like a good story. You couldn't have chosen a better person. What's the name? Cartwright. But she probably isn't using it now. Well, uh, what does she look like? Oh, she's out of this world. She's gorgeous. This, I must see. Come on, I'll help you track her down. Oh, but excuse me, it's, uh, it's because of this and that that I'm looking for her now. Thank you. Well, I was when I left home this morning. You know, I'm one of your most ardent fans. You mean you were? What? Oh, look what I've done to your hat. Oh, that's perfectly all right. It wasn't silly enough anyway. Oh, it couldn't have come to a happier end. Well, of course I'll replace it. Oh, no, but Miss Harper, you don't... Oh, I ruined yours, and I insist upon giving you mine. A head of hopper hat? Oh, well, you've been so swell about it. I wonder if that will be silly enough. Do you think so? On you, it looks good. Oh, hopper. Oh, Francis. Oh, there you are, darling. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, come now. Let's not be ridiculous. Why, I've been worried sick about you. Oh, please don't bother to sit down. I'm just about to leave. Well, after all, my dear, fun is fun, but this is becoming ludicrous. Your cab is here, madam. Oh, thank you. As your husband, may I be so nosy as to inquire where you're going? Oh, I don't know. The Macombo, maybe Sarah's. I don't know yet. Well, may I accompany you? Oh, I'm afraid not. You're hardly dressed for the occasion. Ta-ta. Crack, but she had me tell the cab company she wanted to go to 26 Canyon Drive. 26 Canyon Drive? Why, that's our home. <laughs>
First door to the right. Thank you. Is this her, Tom? This is the girl, all right. How can you have me arrested when I haven't now, done anything? Now, wait a minute. Take it easy. Officer, do you mind if I have a few words with her? You wait right here. No, don't. What is this all about? You know I didn't steal that ring. You gave it to me. No, but you did steal something else. The heart of a swelled kid, Ken Smith. Is this your idea of humor? Bringing me all the way back here just to tell me that? I'm not trying to be funny. This is serious. Serious for both you kids. I don't see why you had to know anything about it. Well, in as much as I started this thing, I thought I'd help to bring it to a happy ending. I'm sure you meant well, Mr. Brenneman, but... Well, really, there isn't anything that can be done. After all, he knew I was engaged to somebody else. He knew the fellow you were engaged to married somebody else. That's what Ken knew. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, let's be sensible about this thing, Dorothy. You're in love with Ken, and I know it. What makes you think so? Those tears. <laughs> Here, honey, have one on me. the only reason I had you brought back. I want you kids to have the chance you're both entitled to. Where's Miss Larson? Inside with Mr. Brunneman. Why? What's the idea of arresting her? What did she do? Why, are you a friend of hers? I sure am, and I'd like to know what this is all about. Hey, come here. Why, you big phony, I'll show you a Come here, you. Ken, Ken, stop it. He's only trying to help. What do you mean? It's all right, officer. Anything can happen in here. Usually does, too. But I was told he had you arrested. He just had me brought back because you asked him to. Shall I take him outside? No, let him stay. The excitement's all over. This thing will settle down to a good old-fashioned family fight. Then you won't need me. No. Thank you very much, officer. You've done the mayor of Encino a great turn tonight. Not at all, Your Honor. Good night. I only asked him to talk to you. You wouldn't listen to me. Because I'm not interested in anything you're trying to say. Can't you get that through your head? Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Brenneman, but gosh, now what do I do? The only thing a gentleman can do. Leave her alone? No, give her a chance to change her mind. But she just walked out. Only to be followed. Well, how do you figure that? Holy mackerel, am I dumb. Gee, I'd like to feel like that just one more day before I die. got your pocketbook. Oh, so I did. Thanks. You're welcome. Could I talk to you a minute? Well, I... I wonder, could I do it while we're dancing?
start to think a little bit about serious things. Such as? Oh, you know, about the future and a lot of things. Like uh, settling down and maybe someday having a home of your own. That sounds wonderful, Ken. You know what I really need to make my post-war plan complete, don't you? No. What? You. Bend your head over. I want to whisper something. You know, we've only known each other about 14 hours. You'll have to give me a little time to think it over. Okay. How long? Oh, three or four minutes. <laughs> well, they kissed, and I hope we'll live happily ever after. Oh, Mrs. Reed will be so happy to hear it. She's asleep now. Thank you for calling. Good night. Good night, Pop. Good night, Pop. Good night, girls. Good night. Gee, Pop, what a day. Well, are you through for the night, Tom? Yeah, all through. Oh, say, Tom. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to tell you this. You know, me and Ma sure like your radio program. Oh, thanks, Pop. Look at that time, and me up at 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, some of the more gags and crazy hacks and foolishness. Yes, and, and problems and yeah, heartaches yeah, and headaches yeah. and whatnot. <laughs> Pop, by golly, that's what makes the world go round, yeah, that's eh? right. <laughs> And me with it. <laughs> Good night, Pop. Good night, Tom. You old scallywag, you. Mr. Bremerman. Oh, no, not you. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that Miss Hopper sat on my pangram hat. Oh, it's too bad you weren't wearing it at the time. Oh, yes, but she gave me this one. Would you mind trying it on so I could tell my friends that you wore it? Oh, thank you, Mr. Bremerman. You're welcome. Oh, you do kiss the ladies whose hats you try on, don't you? Oh, why not? Everything else has happened to me today. <laughs> Mm. Thank you, Mr. Brenneman. Oh, the name is Brenneman, honey. <laughs> Good night. Mr. Brenneman. 